Okay, the radium isotope, alpha emitter, has a half-life of 11.43 days. If you happen to have 1.1 <laughs> 1 .1 gram cube of radium, so I decided to use it to boil water for tea. <laughs> you fill a well insulated container of 200 milliliters. You, you should boil this kind of tea for your teacher. <laughs> Containing 200 milliliters of water at 18 Celsius degree or centigrade, it's got to be and drop the cube of radium. How long? This is a time. How long? How much time you need to that water to boil? This is, a, in principle, how the how nuclear power plants operate. So you have a little more than 1.1 gram of radium, not radium, some other materials. You just put put them in water. They heat up the water, and water boils and creates steams, and steams turn turbines. And that's all there is to it. And we will see how much, how fast can you boil two hundred grams of water, more or less, with one point one gram of radium. So first we. Calculate the heat. How much heat we, do we need to boil the water? So this is the Q, C, M, and delta T. Q is heat. It is needed. C is water capacity, heat capacity. M is mass of the water, and delta T is the temperature difference. From 80 centigrade to 100, that is 82 centigrade. So 82 kelvins doesn't matter. This is the specific heat of the water. It is a large number, but it is what it is. So mass, what is this? <laughs> this is the mass of the water, 200 milliliters. Is this much meters squared cube? And we multiply that by 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed, which is density of water, and we get that is 200 grams or 2, 0 0.2 kilograms is one glass of water so t first of all temperature when the 100 degrees of centigrade is 200 373 kelvins and 80 degrees centigrade is 291 kelvins and when you subtract those two you get all 82 degrees kelvins Difference in Kelvin and centigrades are the same, so 82 centigrades is L2 Kelvin, but there it is what it is. And you just multiply specific heat, mass, and the temperature difference, and you get that you need 68,666.8 joules in order to boil this much water that is on this temperature. So we did find the heat now. Let us see how much heat we get released from this 1.1 gram. So heat is equal to the energy. What is the energy? How we, how we can calculate the energy in this decay? So we have here one element that will go into another element and release alpha particle. In other words, you have radium that will decay into Rn. What is Rn? I will see just about now. So you have radium that decay into a this and helium. So this is the radium, it goes to the two into radon and helium. And what is energy released in one decay? Energy as you can see is mass difference times the speed of light. What is wrong with this? So I just take this uh, circled masses so I get energy to be zero, but that's not good. But monoisotopic mass for this kind of radium and this kind of radon and this kind of helium. So you need to, to take all of these numbers into account so you, for that monoisotopic mass. Okay, now let us see what is the mass. This is the mass defect. And this is the speed of light squared. So that is that Einstein relation be, uh, between energy and the mass, more or less that is that. So why is that? That is uh, mass per mole per mole per mole. And this is the number of that particles 
inside of one mole. So this is a release by one incident only. So if you have just one atom of radium that will go into radon and helium, that will release this much of energy. So this is the mass defect per mole, and this is how much there is. Is there is those points in mole? Uh, in the, is there are, there are atoms in mole, and that is the speed light squared. So this is the energy the, released in one alpha decay of radium. So this doesn't look much, but there is lots of it. So we need x decays for that heat. And from here you can do it yourself, or for complete return answer, please follow the link in the description. If you want more of this, please subscribe and tell your friends. So this is not very easy assignment, but it's very pretty. <laughs> so, thank you.